from Kellum Field in Virginia Beach, Channel 29 WHCS presents Eastern Regional Final 3A High School Football between the Hampton Crabbers and the Kempsville Chiefs. Good evening, everybody. I'm Tim Cole, along with Bob Hintz, as we are here for tonight's game between the Chiefs 11, check that, 10-0-1, and, and Hampton Crabbers 11-1, and as, as we have both the uh, teams meeting at the center of the field for the toss of the coin. The Crabbers, let me correct myself, Kempsville is 10-0-1, and, and Hampton is 11-0. And, and uh, as you can see there, the Hampton Crabbers will have the white uniform tops with the red numerals. Kempsville will be with the dark blue and white numerals. Bob, what do you expect out of tonight's game? Well, uh, reading what the coaches uh, had to say in the paper and also talking with them, it's, it's very obvious that uh, Kempsville's whole offense uh, is generated around their quarterback, uh, McMeans, who is, uh, is responsible for most of their offensive yardage by passing and running the ball. And the Hamptons, of course, is built around their running attack with uh, – Robbie Robinson. It's it's uh, very interesting. This game was postponed, and and if had it been played last night, it would have really definitely been in Hampton's favor. But there's no win tonight, so it will not be no effect at all as, as far as uh, con uh, weather conditions on passing the ball. But it's going to be a good ball game. I don't look like look for it to be uh, uh, runaway like last week, Tim. There you see the officials for tonight's game. Kempsville has won the toss. They'll receive the ball to our right. Hampton, of course, kicking off, will defend the goal to our left. And uh, coming into the game, as you mentioned, McMeans, the quarterback for Kempsville, is the key to their attack. He not only passed for over 1,200 yards, but he ran for over 700 more. So McMeans is the man to stop as far as Hampton is concerned. Well, and he also punched the ball. So, uh, and I wouldn't doubt that he probably brings out the water bucket. He's a uh, very talented athlete, and he's really a high, sought of, uh, high thought of on this side of the water. And of course, he's uh, ranked pretty high in the state for the statistics. So uh, we'll see what Hampton's, of course, got a tremendous defense, Tim. And that's, so we'll the, that's the game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's the Hampton defense against the offense of Kempsville. It's a short kickoff taken by one of the up men at the 25-yard line. And it'll be placed at the 37-yard line where Kempsville will have the ball first and 10. They'll go with McMeans at quarterback. In the backfield will be Brandon Hamilton, number 33. Hamilton incidentally returned the kickoff and also in the backfield will be Scott Fairchild the fullback now he's also the kicker and he may be a very important part of this game before tonight is over with he kicked five field goals during the season yeah and he was kicking them from about 30 yards out 30 35 yards out during warm-up uh, they'll run from the eye formation and do a lot of uh, action passes off that and Hampton's going to stop the run they're not going to be able to run against Hampton uh, Tim, what, I didn't see who the ball carrier was on that one, but he picked up a couple yards. Hamilton on the carry. Michael Alexander for Hampton amongst the tacklers. It appeared to be three or four crabbers around the ball. Pickup of about a yard for Hamilton, so it'll be second down and nine. And Coming into the game, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to tell you, you, you were going to mention the young man that came into the game. They do about what Hampton does. Mike Smith calls all the plays. Coach Gahagan calls the plays for them. He sends them in. Now, they will run that same fake dive play and then run a pass off of that and try to freeze the linebackers for Hampton. Let's see if they'll come right out and pass. Briggs is spread wide to the right, number 15. This is McMean. Still has the football. Has plenty of time. Now t steps forward and is tackled for a loss. In on the stop for the Crabbers, number 60. And that is Weymouth Williams for the Crabbers, sacking McMeans, as McMeans seemingly had a lot of time, but that Hampton defense didn't allow anyone to be open. Well, they said that Hampton has got a suspected pass defense, but uh, looking at statistics, they've only given up 68 yards average uh, on the pass and 60 on the, on the run. So uh, I, I don't see where the suspect. I think they've got a good pass defense. Two-yard loss on that play, so it brings up a third down, and they're back to the original line of scrimmage. Third down and 10, rolling to his right. McMeans throws downfield, has a man open, completes the pass across midfield. I believe the man on the receiving end was Joseph Briggs, number 15. That's who it was. And Briggs, who came into this game as a leader amongst the, the district on this side, Briggs was number two in the district with 41 catches and averaged 14 yards per catch. And that's what the Kempsville is going to have to do, Tim. They're going to have to roll out that uh, slows down the pass rush on Hampton. It gives him more time to pick up his receivers. And he's not standing there and he's running and he's, he's a very accurate passer on the run as you saw on that play. 
The Chiefs with the ball across midfield at the 47, first and 10. McMeans, this time rolling to the near side. Gets some pressure, throws the ball behind Briggs. Briggs almost came up with a catch, but in fact was unable to hold on as he almost made a circus catch on the near sidelines. But over there defending for the Crabbers, Number 70 was Sherwood Jones, who and we saw a lot of last week. Right, he does a good job. Number one was also over there, Tim, and I didn't uh, catch for, number, for Hampton. Number one was also defending on that play. Michael Alexander, as we are working with a little bit of a handicap here in the uh, very spacious press box here at uh, Kellum Field, which is the home of the Kellum Knights of the Beast District. Uh, in the, the press box is in the dark. <laughs> so bear with us if you can. Second down and 10. Clock stops with 10.06 left in the first quarter. No score. McMeans still has the football on the option. Cuts inside to the 45, down to close to the 44. As over there for the Crabbers, amongst others, was Jerome Davis, number nine. Again, Michael Alexander, number one. Crabbers allowed about three yards on the carry. Brings up a third down and about seven. Okay, now what's happening here is, and this is what you're going to see all night long, is uh, McMeans is going to go back. He's going to sprint out to pass. He's going to sprint out and run the ball, and they use a lot of sprint draws where he sprints out and draws a guy, lets on a delay coming back across the middle. So uh, those are the things that Hampton's going to have to look out for. They can't run straight at Hampton. That's Briggs, the last man who caught that first down pass for McMeans at the top of your screen. McMeans will be looking for him. Sets up a screen. It's almost intercepted. It's still up for grabs, and it's finally knocked out of bounds as it appeared momentarily as one of the Hampton Crabbers in the form of Randy Pearson may come up with that football. He was juggling along with he the intended He had the receiver. ball, but he didn't get control of it until he went out of bounds. So, that, of course, he has to, Hampton doesn't get the ball, but that puts him in a punting situation. Bobby Wilson was the intended receiver. He's also a running back, and he is ranked 11th in the district over here in reception. So he's obviously a very versatile running back in the form of Wilson. As we see, McMeans is back in deep punt formation, standing at his 43. And he'll punt this ball clear down to about the 10-yard line if he hits it, and he hits it good. He hits it fine. Back there is Overton, and they let it roll. It's going to roll down to the two-yard line. So the crab, well, actually, they no, it now went into the end zone. It's hard to tell on the line markers here. It looked like he was down close to the two, that was in fact, a, went into the end zone. That was a gamble on the, uh, the receiver down there to let that ball to... That field is so soft, Tim, that that ball is not going to hit and bound into the end zone like you would normally expect on a uh, field that hasn't had a lot of rain. But he was very, very fortunate that ball went in the end zone. Hampton could be starting from inside their, their five rather than at the 20-yard line. Similarly, the Kempsville Chiefs have a lot of two-way players. As I look out on the field, I see Briggs along with McMeans. McMeans not only is a quarterback, the punter, and a rusher, but he also plays defensive back. And we have flags down on the very first play. It may be a delay of game against Hampton. I believe sure. that uh, Kimsville moved. One of their, their linemen jumped offside and got into the neutral zone at, on a uh, cadence call. And that's that exactly the call. the call. All right, so Hampton, the benefit of a five-yard penalty now, it'll make it first and five from the 25 for Hampton. They start Michael Bullock at quarterback, as he has for the last few games for the Crabbers. Robbie Robinson, who, of course, is the main cog in the offensive machine for the Hampton Crabbers, is in there along with Marvin Dickerson. In last week's game, in the first half, the only person that carried the ball was Robbie Robinson, so we'll see what they're... Well, Michael Bullock crosses them up with a quarterback keeper, turns the corner, and, and picks flag. up fine yardage as, again... Another flag down. First down for the Crabbers if the play holds. No, it looks like he's going to call either an illegal use of hands or a clipping play uh, call because on that side, it was behind the run. And that's what he's called yes, holding. So the penalty will wipe out what would have been a first down for the Crabbers. Michael Bullock crossing up the Kempsville defense as he chose to keep the ball. And again, as you said, last week, 23 plays in the first half, 21 times. Robbie Robinson carried the football. The other two times were passes. So. That's right, and you know, and I'm sure the Kemsville is aware of that. They had uh, films of the game and everything else, and uh, this is just a shame because that was a, a fine call by Coach Smith, because you know that they're going to zero in on on Robbie, but uh, you're not going to stay able to stop Robbie. But now you now you're back. Uh, you got uh, 15, first and 15. They went from first and 10 to first and five. Now it's first and 15. Well, actually, uh, there's a difference from the point of infraction. It's actually 13 yards. Okay. To be According to the line markers, it's first and 13. This is a handoff in the middle of the line 
and carrying the football for Hampton with Keith, Keith Custis, I believe. I'm trying number 30, to right? yeah. check that. It was number 30 for the Crabbers, Samuel Creighton, who uh, is in the ball game now in place of Dickerson. Last week, we saw Dickerson exclusively in the backfield with Robinson. And already Mike Smith has thrown a couple of different looks at the, the Kemsville Chiefs. Pickup of two yards makes it second down and 11 for the Crabbers. No score, 8.25 remaining in the first quarter. This is Bullock again on the option. Looking downfield, wants to pass. He fumbles the football, and it's Kemsville ball. That was, uh, uh, that was not a good good thing on his, on his fault. He should have just gone ahead and taken the hit and gone down. He, Put the ball out there where they get a hold of it, and that's what's going to make a difference in this ball game at turnovers. Because one thing that Kemsville has not done all year long is turn the ball over. Now, if Hampton turns the ball over, especially down at that end of the, the field, uh, and they got it, the worst thing's going to happen, they're going to come away with the field goal. All right, Kemsville with a golden opportunity, first and ten, the ball resting right on the ten yard line. McMean's the quarterback. Fakes and keeps, rolling along the line of scrimmage. He's racing for the corner, he's gonna score! And that's what he's been doing all year long for him. He will pass the ball and he'll run the ball, and you can take advantage of a turnover and a mistake like what Hampton did right there. That, that is a fine a call that Coach Kahagan did with that time. Went to his bread and butter, went to his the man that's, that's the option. He can either pass or run it, and he chose to run it, and he had a wide open field into the end zone. Fairchild, who had 24 extra point successes in the uh, regular season for Kempsville, will be on to try the extra point. That means the holder. And the extra point try is good. Well, Bob, what we uh, had expected not to have happened, Hampton cannot afford to make mistakes, as you said. Especially, uh, again, uh, Bullock, granted, he was being chased by some pretty big fellas down there, but he coughed the ball up when he really shouldn't have. He should have right. gone down eating the loss and taking his lumps. Right, and I'm not sure if that wasn't a broken play, Tim, because he was out there naked. There was no blockers out there. Everybody else went to the to the Hampton side of the field, and he came around on this side with no blockers, and there were four defensive people there. So the only thing he could done was either throw the ball down the field or just take the loss and then kick the ball away. You don't give the ball to somebody inside the 10-yard line, and that's or wherever he gave it down there. It was close to the 10-yard line. Well, the Hampton team has not faced a team as large, I understand. Of course, I didn't see all of the Hampton games, but as I understand it, Kempsville is the largest team that Hampton has faced all year, and uh, Hampton only gave up 6.2 points per game during the regular season, so they've already exceeded what they would normally give up, but you're, you can't credit the defense or charge the defense with that one. Taken at the 15-yard line. And the Crabbers have it across the 20. Close to the 30-yard line. They're going to mark it at about the 28-yard line. And the Crabbers will have it first and 10 as they trail 7 to nothing on a fumble recovery by Kempsville and a 10-yard drive as McMean simply took the ball on the handoff, had the option, and raced to the far corner for the touchdown. So Kempsville jumps out in front, seven to nothing. The Crabbers will have to go up uphill now as they need to get some momentum going for their team. What they need to do is just drive this ball down the field and get some uh, confidence back, and that's the man you give it to is Robbie Robinson. Give him the ball and let him go. That's their bread and butter all year long, and the first series of downs, he didn't touch the ball. Todd Summers also in the backfield with Robinson. Robinson picks up close to five. They'll call it four as it'll be second down and six for the Crabbers. Seven minutes and some change remaining here in the first quarter. 7.02. Robinson again gets the call. Off the left side, Robinson gets across the 35 to about the 37. The yard markers on the field are very hard to pick up tonight. You may be able to see that on your screen. As they, the field is in excellent condition, but the chalk really soaked into the ground. Yeah, it really did. It looks like he leaves about a yard. Now, this is one thing I watched them, the films that uh, Coach Smith was looking at of Kimsville this year. Their defense is a reaction defense. They don't cross the line of scrimmage. They meet you head on and then try to react to the play. That will give up one and two and three yards sometimes when, when you don't want it to. And uh, 
That's, of course, what Hampton is looking for, is to get him that yardage. Robinson has Robinson the first does. down. One guy is hard for one guy to bring Robbie down, and that's what Hampton needs to do. And you can see if they just stick to their, their game plan and give the ball to Robbie and, and meet the uh, point of uh, contact at the line of scrimmage and do what they've been doing in the past, they can uh, score, and they need to get a score in this time. Of course, to, to, not to, to argue the point with you, uh, Hampton must not panic at this point. Training Absolutely. seven to nothing is not a, a, a great situation. You've got almost six minutes left in the first quarter, so they don't need to panic. They need to stick with their ground game. This is Robinson trying to turn the corner. Does so, gets away from one man, and finally gets the first down, and then we have a late flag. Flag way over here. So Robinson got the first down for the Crabbers, but whether the flag will affect the play or not, we'll have to wait and see. Actually, I don't even... I don't think that's a flag. I think just, okay. Uh, no, I, I don't mean that Hampton should panic, but I think Hampton should not go from the game plan. Exactly. I think they just need to do what they're doing. And you can see Robbie gets hit, but he doesn't go down. And he gets hit, looks like he stopped, and he picks up four or five yards. So the Crabbers have it just shy of the 45 of Kempsville. First man through, we have flags all over the place, as in the backfield with Robinson is Todd Summers, number 42. He got the call, but they'll... I believe the, the, the call is going to go against Hampton. Looked like Hampton had a, 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 one of their interior linemen move prematurely. A defensive man started to move, which they can do, but an uh, interior lineman cannot. Look at the size of that number 77 coming off. That. I, I mean, was he going is, to say, I want to check my stats on That's Robert Glass. He's only 5'11", and he weighs 280 pounds. <laughs> so uh, you want to run around him. You certainly don't want to run at him. Uh, that's for sure. My heavens, 5'11", 280. Well, he comes out, he, he takes up two, play two seats on the bus, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, the Crabbers backed up five, first and 15. Just on their side of the midfield stripe. Bullock going downfield, got a man open momentarily as it was a foot race between McMeans and Overton. And the ball was just thrown a little bit long for Overton. So it'll be third down now for the Crabbers, third down and 15. We saw that last week. We saw yeah. that they, uh, Michael Bullock can throw the ball. There's he no can throw the that. ball. He gets it out there. He just needs to get a little, uh, a little more confidence on his throws. He's throwing it up and hoping that the, his runner will run underneath it. Uh, when you run the ball as well as Hampton, that's a good play. It's just they send one one guy out on a, on a pass pattern, just run him on a, on a uh, fly pattern. Overton lines up to the near side. That's the man at the bottom of your screen. Fake to Robinson. Over the middle for Jeter. Jeter's got it. At the 35, down close to the 30. And that's the young man that we got so impressed with in the Hampton ball game. And uh, they didn't pass it all last week because they didn't have to. But he was wide open. He finds a good spot down there. And uh, he's just a junior. He's probably one of the biggest kids that Hampton has on the team, stature-wise. I think he's about 6'3". Jeter coming into the game was uh, one of favorite receivers for Michael Bullock. As you said, last week they didn't throw them because they didn't need to. It was the Robbie Robinson show last week. But this time, Bullock has to mix it up a little bit and does so successfully. Pitch back goes to Robinson. No hole there, but Robinson still driving forward, gets about four. Robbie Robinson on the carry. Keep the beans on the back. And the Crabbers move the ball close to the, well, let's see now. I got to figure this out at 40. They're across the 30, down to about the 28-yard line. He picked up about four yards in that that, uh, that carry. And it looks like he is being stopped at the line of scrimmage, and that's what really impresses me about this young man. But he really gives credit to the lineman that, that blocked for him. Second down and six for the Crabbers. Robinson again, still on his feet. He refuses to go down as he gets down close to the first down. Robinson showing great second and third effort. And he I've, has I've, tremendous balance. He, he has Robinson tremendous, but just such drive and determination is is, is admirable. He's not real big. He's only 5'8". He's 165 pounds, which isn't, you know, super super big, but it's not real small either. He just has tremendous leg power. I, I got a chance last week after the game at Todd Stadium to be near him physically for the first time, and he has tremendous legs. The, the man is built like a fire hydrant almost. <laughs> Well, he's definitely hard to bring down, but this is in four down territory. If they don't make it here, they'll definitely Third and one. Robinson gets more than enough for the first down. You were right about that, Bob, as they cross the 20 down inside the 
20 to about the 17. And yes, they're in four down territory. There's no question about that. But he gets the first down for the Crabbers. So the Crabbers are driving now. They started this drive on the ensuing kickoff after McMean scored the lone touchdown of our ball game. Kempsville ahead seven to nothing, three minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Hampton driving, the ball marked at the 17 yard line. Sec the handoff this time goes to Summers, number 42. Again, a man that we didn't really see play much at all uh, in the game against Deep Creek. No, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe he's a, a freshman on the, on the team. Mike Smith has got a, a, just a, a plethora of uh, underclassmen on this team. And he picked up a good four yards on that play. But you know the Kinsville defense is gonna be looking for Robbie. But uh, so was uh, Oscar Smith. <laughs> they got to see a lot of him. <laughs> Pick up a four. On the delay, this is Robinson. Down close to the first down. Robinson is not stopped and taken down by one man all night long. Every time he carries the football, several people have to make contact with him before he's going to stop him. So he's down close to the first down, and they're going to measure to see if this, in fact, is a first down for the Crabbers. It looks to be like it might be by the length of the nose of the football. It's either he's getting missed it or got looking. it. Yeah, you, well, you got an eagle eye tonight, Tim. That was right on it. I wish I could see my roster in front of me. <laughs> That's the only problem. You can see far away. It's that uh, close and without light. Today. Without light. So <laughs> Robinson gets the first down. Check. Yeah. And uh, the Crabbers. They're inside the 10, I believe, aren't they? So yeah, they got, they're at the 7. Okay, they got first and goal. Mike Smith juggling the players in from the sidelines for each of the plays. Of course, Mike Smith, very successful at Hampton, the coach for Kempsville, and very successful coach in his own right, Ralph Gahagan, who has been around for years and has built a winning tradition everywhere he's gone. This is Robinson stepping over people into the touchdown. Hands, okay, now that's what we, we, we're used to seeing. And that first series of down, Hampton didn't do that. It came out, they started doing something a little different. And uh, this is one thing that we had talked about earlier that uh, Hampton has got a good offense and Kimsville gives up, gives up points. They do give up some points and uh, it's gonna be to who can stop the other team. And if Hampton can stop the turnovers, you can stop giving the ball to the, to the Kimsville, then we're gonna have a, uh, a good game. Laneve on to try the important extra point. And this one is no good as Laneve lost his footing. Just as he went to make contact with the football, he lost his footing. Now, you and I were on the field before the game, Bob, and we saw, we didn't obviously check out the entire field, but I was told that there are certain areas of the field that are softer than others, and the field is in real good shape otherwise. But Laniv, you can see he definitely lost his footing he as he went to kick the ball. Yeah, that, and I know that that really hurts his, uh, his mental state of mind, but he has to understand that that's going to happen. But one thing about high school football is you can miss an extra point, come back and score a touchdown, you get a two-point conversion, and you're right back even with the other team. And uh, Robinson in your backfield, a two-point conversion, not a bad thing. That's anyway. not a bad thing to have, you're right. So we'll just see what, if Hampton can stop uh, Kimsville on a, on a long drive. Now, Kimsville scored, but they were inside by the 10-yard line, but they had trouble moving the ball down the field, so let's see what happens this time. Good point, as McMean's got the uh, the touchdown for Kempsville, but he started from his 10, so I mean, you, uh, from rather the Hampton 10, so you can't really give him too much credit as far as being able to drive the ball. At the 15-yard line, this is Kempsville, up the middle, across the 30 to about the 34-yard line. Kempsville will have pretty good field position to start this drive, so Robbie Robinson responds to the touchdown by McMeans with one of his own. This going on a long drive by Hampton as they simply control the ball all the way down the field. And Robinson carried it accordingly and appropriately into the end zone for the six points, but Leneve had his difficulty with the footing. So Hampton finds themselves on the short end of a 7-6 score. 135 remaining clock moving here in the first quarter from Kellum Field in Virginia Beach. This is McMeans, the quarterback. Hands off. First man off the right side, and uh, Hamilton is the ball carrier. This was his key running back uh, when he didn't run it himself. As I said, McMeans was, was pretty much a one-man gang himself. Okay, now, when we was talking to Danny Mitchell, Coach Danny Mitchell, one of the assistant coaches at Hampton before the ball game, and he said this is one thing that's a little different with this team than other teams like Bethel and, and Kickatan who run the veer and the option. 
on on uh, what Kimsfield does is he fakes to that man and then he goes with the ball himself. He has no pitch man, so you don't have to worry about somebody to pitch the ball to. So he'll fake to the dive and then keep the ball himself. Hamilton got four, second down and six. This and is this McMean still with the exactly football. What happened to him. And McMean so gets more than enough for the first down. They're going to have to cut it, cut him off at at the at the line of scrimmage when he comes down because he's there's nobody to pitch to. So you don't have to worry about a pitch man. You got to hit the man with the ball. The you have to stop McMeans, and McMeans is is a very healthy young man at 180 pounds and six feet tall. He he's a good sized running back as well as a quarterback. So you're going to have to drag him down with one or two uh, extra players to help you out. He's, he's absolutely a big, strong man. First down for Kempsville. Ball just shy of the 48 of Kempsville. This time it means hands off up the middle. Carrying the ball this time is again Hamilton, Brandon Hamilton. And Hamilton gets good yardage as he picks up a little more than 10 or right at 10. Yeah, they say it's a first down. So give 10 yards to Hamilton on the carry. So the, uh, right now, Kempsville is moving the ball well. They started this from their 35, I guess it was 30, 34. And they're doing it without the pass, Tim. That's what they've been doing all year is been passing the ball, but they're doing it with the run. And they're doing it against a team that is noted for a, uh, a good uh, defense against the run. Well, you and I have seen the first quarter come to an end to uh, just to carry that a little further. You know, we were talking about the fact that we were trying to decide whether we thought this would be a high scoring game or a, a low scoring game. I think it'll be a high scoring game. I don't think seven to six is by any means going to be your, your score. Now, I look for, and we were, had talked earlier uh, before the broadcast, that uh, I, I believe that Hampton will score four times. And, uh, and very well could be that, that Kempsville could score four times. They're both capable of putting points on the board. Well, um, as a matter of fact, to, to echo what you're saying, Kempsville averaged about 26 points a game. Hampton averaged about 25 points a game. The big difference was Kempsville was giving up uh, a lot more points per game than Hampton was. Hampton uh, allowed only six, whereas Kempsville allowed 13. Right. Yeah, Kempsville was allowed two two touchdowns where Hampton was allowing one. So uh, we'll see if, if Hampton's defense can uh, can come up to the uh, the call here because they Kempsville has definitely taken the ball right to their defense and on the ground, which is very uh, unexpected. So to start the second quarter, Kempsville will be at their check that the Hampton 42. And again, close to a first down for Kempsville. That's Nathan Kimball, number one, carrying the ball for the Chiefs. Nathan Kimball, not real big. You're talking about little guys. He's again 5'8. Five, 5'8. Eight. Five, eight. They're going to have to call time out here to measure. You know, we were talking, uh, you and I were before the game uh, started. We had a lot of time going over nice and early because we wanted to avoid the, the uh, traditional Virginia Beach traffic. <laughs> And we were talking about the fact that, of course, both of these teams did have two common opponents. Uh, Hampton beat Bethel, of course, 21 to 15, and they beat Green Run 7 to 6. Whereas Kemsville beat Bethel 21 13, and uh, Kemsville beat Green Run 14 13. So, I mean, there's virtually no the difference between the two teams. The two common opponents that they've got. Uh, but again, when you when you're playing for this, you, you really can you can look at some statistics like that. But what counts is tonight, and uh, if you go out there with a little more confidence than the other team. On the the first down play here, the Kempsville Chiefs did get a first down moments ago as they cross cross the 30 to the Hampton 28 yard line. As Kempsville has not really been stopped in any way, shape, or form, except on their first possession, they were not able to to carry the ball all the way down the field. They had to, to kick the ball, and then Hampton, of course, fumbled it, and then they carried it in from 10 yards out. But well, that's the Travers now are really faced with their first tough test here. Right, that first series are down there with passing the ball, and this series they have yet to put the ball up in the air. Pick up of three yards, second down and seven, and McMean keeps the football, crosses the 25. To about the 24. So McMean's very tricky with the football. It's hard to see sometimes whether he's handed the ball off. Needless to say, that's his intent. But he's doing a real good job right now of freezing the defenders yes. for him. And this is and this is the intent. What uh, Cohagen was talking about in the paper was that he will use the uh, play run fake 
to freeze the linebackers, which will open his backs coming out of the backfield. And they do a lot of swing passes to their the fullback and the tailback coming out of the backfield. So, and this could very well be a passing situation. He's got about three yards to go. But this is he's your in. first critical situation right here. McMeans keeps it. Boy, is he fast. He's got the first down and then some. Inside the 20, down to the 15, 14-yard line. I'm impressed with this McMeans. He has some real good quickness. He's good quickness, but that is also a uh, – he does a good job of faking the handoff, which which enables him to get, get open. And, of course, once he's got that open hole, he's – he doesn't hesitate, he gets right on through it. He does a good job. I'm very impressed with him too, Tim. So the Hampton Crabbers are also impressed with McMeans because they have called a timeout. They want Mike Smith to come out on the field and he's gonna, needless to say, discuss with the defense how to stop this very effective offense that we're seeing for Kempsville right now. I don't know that if uh, Mike has made some adjustments in his defense because of the passing game, and therefore it has opened up the running game or not. I'm trying to notice any any changes in the, their tendencies, but he runs a basic uh, Y tackle six and then he'll run some stunts off of it anyway. But uh, there are some awful big holes being opened up for the runners on this series. Once they started the ball, they have two or three times on first down picked up the first down. So. Uh, he's going to have to make some adjustments. And this is one thing that Mike says about his team. They are able to make adjustments on the field, where a lot of times it's the half times where you have to make your adjustments. So uh, I know he's out in the middle there doing some, some talking to them right now and trying to get their their uh, their act together. <laughs> well, I, I think it's a good, very good phrase because right now the Crabber defense is being pushed back. They are not standing their ground. They haven't really stopped Kempsville at all during this drive. But as we said, both teams can move the football, so it doesn't really surprise us. As you see on your screen, McMeans has been extremely effective all year long. First down. McMeans hands off to the second man through. And that is in the form of, again, Brandon Hamilton, number 33, for the Chiefs. So Hamilton picks up good yardage. He's inside the 10, down close to the seven yard line. So he picks up about seven, almost eight. And the running attack right now is working to perfection for Kempsville. They came into the game averaging almost 300 yards on total offense and about 26 points a game. They've only shut out one opponent, Kempsville has, and of course Hampton had four shutouts during the regular season. Their defense is really being tested on this drive. You have to take your hand off to, hats off to McMeans. He's doing a super job. And that's McMean keeping it on the right side. He's pushed back, but he may have gotten close to the first down. If not, well, I actually don't think he got the first down. He got close to the five. It'll depend on exactly where they marked the ball. And it's hard to see from this angle where we are up here. Now, there's a good shot from the sideline camera that uh, you can see these guys are going to be plenty dirty by the time this, this evening's over because that field is wet and it's damp. So a big third down now for Kempsville as Hampton will be digging in. And as you said, we're in four down situation yeah, here. So it really isn't, really isn't crucial in that sense for Kempsville, but they'd obviously like to get the first down. From the five yard line, third down and, and one. Look for a sprint out, Tim. McMeans gives off to Hamilton. Hamilton scores with ease. Allie, I crossed me up. I looked for a sprint out and maybe Hampton was too, but uh, he just gave it to his man right off tackle on left side, and he went into the end zone virtually untouched. And that was a nice drive. Certainly was. Hamilton carried from the five to cap the drive, and Kempsville jumps on top by the score of 13 to six, as we'll see Fairchild out of the hold of McMean try to make it 14 for Kempsville. The kick is up. It's got plenty of height, plenty of distance. We got a flag down. They say the kick is no good. But we'll wait and see the flag. Now, this is a very important flag. I'll tell you what happened, Tim. They had a young man to climb up the back of somebody else on Hampton's team and jumped up in the air. You can't use another man as a propulsion agent to get you up in the air, and I believe that's what's going to happen here, that you can't do that, and they're going to call the flag on Hampton, which gives Kempsville another chance at uh, kicking the ball. And that's the Illegal procedure. As you saw very well on your screen, the referee, number 33, called it. And the Hampton Crabbers will be penalized, but more importantly, the, the penalty is not important. The fact of the matter is they get a try for that extra extra point again. Look like they may be going for two, Tim. It does appear that way. As we see coming into the game, Briggs, number 15, 
And uh, well, let's check and see now. It looks like Fairchild is staying in the game for Kempsville. So we'll wait and see exactly what Kempsville decides they want to do. And they may want to take a time out and discuss That's, this. That's exactly what they're going to do. And this is a, a golden opportunity for them. They're uh, closer to the, the goal line. You've got, uh, uh, and he's throwing off the kicking tee. He just threw the kicking tee off the field. So I look for him to go for the two, which will then give them 15. And even if Hampton does go for two, they're still down. If, if, uh, assuming, of course, that Hampton will score another touchdown and, and try to go for a two-point, they would still be behind if he gets his uh, two-point conversion here. And, uh, and I'm sure that's what Cahagan's doing. I see him stand out there talking to the officials. There you see, that is Coach Cahagan walking or running, jogging, however you want to call it, towards you. And you see what he's doing camera. is he's checking the field out because they can move the, the ball to the hash marks. And Hagen hasn't missed a trick tonight, has I he? I tell you what, he's a, he's a cagey coach, and he knows what he's doing. He's standing right out there in the huddle calling that play. And uh, you and I had talked about this earlier. This is one of the things that was hard for me to get used to is that a coach can go out in the field and talk to the whole team. But uh, they can move the ball to each one of the either side of the hash marks they want to, and he's going to go to the side. Maybe he's got drier and better footing. I don't know. Some but, of our uh, viewers may remember the name Gahagan. He was a coach at Woodrow Wilson for many years in the old Eastern District. Right. So we, we have a two-point conversion try now. McMeans will call the signals. And he gives off to Hamilton. Hamilton fumbles the football, so they will be denied the extra point. That may be in uh, Hampton's favor. That just may be in Hampton's favor. So Hamilton coughs it up, and it looked like he was going to score without too much difficulty. But as he got close to the goal line, and I, I, I emphasize that because had he crossed the goal line with the ball in his possession, as soon as he breaks the plane, it would have been an extra point. Absolutely. But obviously he did not have control as he hit the goal line. So Hampton gets uh, kind of a dodging of the bullet here. They had had been able to keep Kempsville from getting the extra point by the fact that they missed it on the kick, but then the penalty for illegal procedure against Hampton set up that opportunity for a two-point try. So we've had kind of a chess game going out there between the coaches right now. Well, and, and that's basically what it is. Both of these teams have, have fine athletes, they, and they have excellent coaching staffs on both teams. And uh, right now what you're doing is you're pitting your best against their best from the, the two districts. And uh, it's who can do something that's a little different, that's out of the ordinary, that can catch the other team off guard, because you know the tendencies. The Crabbers will receive the kickoff at the 10-yard line. This is Craig Overton. Up the middle, across the 30. So the Crabbers will have good field position. And now and we'll look for the Robbie Robinson show again, because I'm sure that's what we're going to see. So the Crabbers trail by the score of 13 to 6. And Robinson has scored the lone touchdown for Hampton. The extra point try, if you missed it, was uh, the knee missed his or, or lost his footing on the extra point try, and the, the ball was not even close going in. So Hampton has 6, 13 for Kempsville. Hampton starts from their 31 yard line. Bullock hands off to Robinson. Robinson turns the corner. He's got some running room. And he's finally dragged down as he crosses the 45 to almost the 48-yard line. So from his 34 to the 48, 14-yard pickup. I tell you what, the fans are going to see a tremendous offensive show on both teams tonight. And uh, what really surprised me, and I'm sure the fans on Kempsville, was that uh, uh, on, on Kempsville Drive, they did not put the ball up in the air one time. And the first time he had the ball, of course, he, he was passing every other down. So... Uh, this is a good spectator uh, game tonight because you're going to see a lot of points on the, or a lot of offense on the, on the field. From the 47, Hampton first and 10. Again, Robinson over the right side, over midfield, down to the 44 of Kempsville. Almost another first down as this ball will be marked just on the 45. So he needs to get to about the 44 for the first down. So this will be a, a wasting down, if you, if you can in fact call it that. Against Kempsville, I doubt if we'll see that. But you have a situation here with a second and one where you might want to experiment a little bit. Right, and uh, Mike Smith has done this in the past where he will send his... Uh, his wide receiver just on a, on a, uh, a fly pattern. And uh, but at this point in the game, I look for him just to give the ball to Robbie, pick up that first down. 
Well, he picks up the first down, but it's not Robinson this That's time. That's Custis, I believe, number 30, isn't it? Uh, actually, it's Samuel Creighton, number 30. Okay, Custis. That's what I, I confused about a while ago. Custis is 10, and, and okay. from our angle a while ago, I had some difficulty with it. But it, that is Creighton, Samuel Creighton, number 30, who carries the ball. And Mike Smith is not keeping the same running tandem in the backfield. He's had Dickerson in there to start. He's had uh, Summers. We have yet to see Calvin Knight. Of course, Calvin Knight would take uh, the place of Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson, right. And he is a fine runner in his own right. I know you have been impressed with him uh, in the games that we have seen when he has played. First down, Robinson dives over the middle to the 35. Pick up of a couple of yards for the Crabbers. It'll be second down as the Crabbers started this drive from the 34 and have reached the 30 yard line. Check that the 35 yard line of Kempsville. I'm glad you're picking up these. these uh, I wish you had to yard. figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be guessing. Pitch back to Robinson, right side. Got good blocking in front of him, turns the corner and is driven out of bounds, but not before getting the first down. So Robinson, I'm telling you, Robinson is moving that football as we saw him do against Deep Creek. I don't think you can put Deep Creek in the same category with Kempsville, at least not from what I've seen so far tonight. No, I think uh, Deep Creek had a fine team and they're in right, but uh, I don't believe they're in the same category or the, in the same uh, ranking as these two teams. These are definitely the two, two of the top teams in the state. And it could very well, the winner of this game could end up being the state champion this year. So Robinson gets the first down. Ball is at the 23-yard <laughs> line. Again, Robinson on the carry. Tripped up as he goes across the right side. And Robinson will be down close to the 20. And Robbie Robinson, the announcer here at the stadium, can just keep saying Robbie Robinson. If he had been a time field last Friday, he could have said it all night. Well, now, uh, what I was talking about, either one of these teams, that uh, whoever wins tonight will represent the Eastern uh, region in the, in the playoffs. And if uh, Hampton wins, then the game will be played at Todd Stadium 1.30 next uh, Saturday. And if Kempsville will be played here at 1.30, if Kempsville is the winner. It's back to Robinson across the 20, down close to the 17. And the opponent for the winner of this game will be Monacan. That's right. We picked that up earlier. The Monacan had already uh, qualified and evidently won uh, last night. Well, maybe they played this afternoon. I don't know when their team, their game was. I think I saw where the game was played last night. It can be pronounced Monacan or Monacan or Monacan Bagan or anything you want. <laughs> but they got where they got because they're a good team. They won 17 to 14 last night, and uh, their game obviously wasn't rained out. But certainly this game was, as uh, all of us know. So we got a third down and about. Well, close to three. Robinson gets the call. Everyone in the stadium knew he would. And he does not get the first down. But again, you're in four down territory here with the Crabbers. He'll come up a little shy. It looks like it'll be fourth and about one. So he's down close to the 14. He needs to get one more yard, and it's a fourth down for the Crabbers. 420. You need to get that uh, play in there real quick, like, because he had already signaled the, the call, and you don't want to get a five yard delay a game here. Certainly they need don't. to get this play called and get up there at the line of scrimmage real quick, like. Trying to keep my eye on the uh, official that's in the backfield there with Hampton. He's the one that keeps the. Long count, and he calls timeout. So Hampton was concerned about losing the time. And they, of course, they, I'm sure part of their plan was to try a long count, hopefully getting Kess for the well, top off. But they couldn't afford to call too long a count. No, they, uh, he did call a, uh, a staggered count because the uh, couple of the Kinsville people did jump. But with Kinsville being the type of defense that they do, that they don't generally shoot across the line of scrimmage and try to get in the backfield, that they they really hit and react at the line of scrimmage, it's, it's harder to, to, to call or to pull them offside with your cadence count. Kempsville got here by beating Lake Taylor 20 to 14 at the same night that Hampton was defeating Deep Creek 34 to 14. Uh, it was assumed initially by us that Hampton would be playing Lake Taylor and then playing the winner of Deep Creek in Kempsville. But of course, that's all history now. That, but Lake Taylor uh, really gave Kempsville a battle. They were driving inside the five in the final minute of the game last week, trailing by six and coughed it up. So uh, mm -hmm. Kempsville precariously got here to the finals by just narrowly beating a good Lake Taylor team. 
Well, the Crabbers, fourth and one. And this Four is minutes a, exactly remain. This is definitely a must situation for the Crabbers. They got to pick this thing up because this would do a whole lot for the defense of uh, Kimsville if they were able to uh, stop Hampton. Robinson gets close to the first down. We'll yeah, have I to believe wait he and see. I up. believe he got it, but I, I'll, my eagle eye isn't that eagle eye from here. It's hard to tell <laughs> the way these the field is. It is a first down. So the Crabbers get the first down, much to the delight of a good contingent of Hampton fans. As you can possibly see, if we get an opportunity, the fans are completely surrounding the field. Everybody on the uh, far side where the camera's looking, that is the Hampton uh, uh, side. And uh, there are, there's a, a tremendous crowd here tonight. They have encircled this entire uh, field. So from the 13, this is Robinson racing for the corner. They're not gonna catch him. McMeans will not get a touchdown, Hampton. And I tell you, that is just, that's what makes this guy such a, a tremendous back because that play was designed to go off tackle and not around them, but it was plugged up and around, around he went. Now, Mike Smith has got a decision to make here. Should he go ahead and attempt the uh, point after by a kick or should he go with the uh, to try of the two point? I, if I see the kick, I, I see the, uh, yeah, they are gonna talk about it, but I believe the kicker is in and uh, I'm sure that he is going to look real close at where he's got to plant his foot before he kicks the ball. Mike Smith taking his time to get out to the huddle. Again, as we mentioned, the coaches are allowed to go right into the huddle, unlike in years past. And it uh, looked like Mike might have been walking slowly to give himself a chance to decide, because as you see now, it's 13 to 12. And this brings up an interesting situation. Do you go for the uh, extra point, which normally for Leneve would be a sure thing. He, he was very successful during the regular season. Lost his footing at the other end of the field. I, I hasten to add the fact that this is not the same end of the field. So uh, it is a, a, an interesting situation that you're faced with. There you see the time and the score here in the second quarter. So it'll be interesting to see. It really will be. I, you know, I would almost venture to, to guess that Mike will go for the, he, that he'll kick the ball rather than, because you know you're going to score more points. Both teams are going to score again. I, I feel like, and you, and you and I know that both of these are very explosive. Uh, uh, so he's going to go for two. <laughs> just, boy, well, you know Mike uh, would do that. Yeah. He, he's never done what we thought he was going to do anyway. That's what makes him successful on us announcers. Robinson gets the fake, and Bullock is tripped up in the backfield. So a good defensive effort by Kempsville, as Robinson was the man that was faked to, and Bullock was simply tripped up before he could get going. Over there and to stop him was John Perry the third, number 78. And that's something that they have not done all year, is get in somebody else's backfield. And maybe that's what Hampton was expecting them, not to get to the backfield and give uh, Bullock a chance to take the ball on a uh, quarterback uh, keep around the right end, but he was tripped up in the backfield by a fine defensive play. So, so now Hampton still on the short end. Well, they, they've proven that they can move the football. It's just going to be a matter of, it seems to me in this game, the way things are going, it's going to be who has the ball last. Right. Well, not only who has the ball last, but who is successful in their, uh, their point after. <laughs> <laughs> it's really gotten down to that. You're right, because we've had uh, two missed extra points for the Crabbers and one missed extra point for Kempsville. So the, the extra point tries have become very important here. We're talking 13 to 12, and this is exactly what we had expected. Leneve will kick off. It's a short kick. They try to kick it to the up man. They don't like to kick it long, and immediately taken down at the 35-yard line for Kempsville. So Kempsville will have the ball, 328 remaining in the first half. So they're they're about 65 yards away from Pater. Well, I'm anxious to see what they're going to do. The first series, they uh, put the ball up in the air. The second series, they didn't. Uh, they were successful in the second series. In fact, both times they scored was from the run and not from the pass at all. So I look for them to keep the ball on the ground until Hampton can stop them and force them to pass. And of course, they'll probably show, prove me wrong real quick like. Riggs comes to the near side. McMeans rolling to the near side, picks up some blocking, is going to be gang tackled, and flag goes down as the Crabbers had good defensive pursuit. But a flag is down. We'll look like see it was a face mask. It looked like it might have been a face mask call. That's what it is. Hampton is guilty of a face mask grabbing. So with 3.02 left, the Crabbers will be penalized. They had pretty well contained Kempsville on that play. McMeans was coming to the near side on the quarterback keeper. 
and they'll have it tacked on to his gain, so that'll be a very costly penalty to the Crabbers. They'll have the ball now right at midfield mark, just across the midfield mark, at about that's the 48. A, that's a tremendous penalty because it gets from the infraction. Well, he marked it off from where the tackle was made. That's the worst part of it, is yeah. that it's packed, tacked on to the game. So the Crabbers will have to dig in once again. They have not had great success in stopping Kempsville here in the first half. And needless to say, with a little less than three minutes to go in the first half, that's their primary objective, is to stop Kempsville from scoring again. Out of the eye, McMeans has Briggs at the top of your screen. And McMean keeps the ball as he fakes the handoff to the second man through and gets down close to the 45. So McMeans picks up about three. And that play appeared to be more successful than it ended up being at first. It looked like he was going to get some pretty good yardage. But the Hampton defense closed quickly. And let's give credit to the Hampton defense. They, they got the Hampton here. That's, that's how they that's got right. it the defense. They have done a, a, a tremendous job all year long. And... Uh, of course, they're up against a fine offensive team, so they're uh, both Classic teams. Classic matchup. Yes, very classic matchup. From the 44, McMeans with time moving, 2.13 left, and this is Hamilton, and he is stopped for a very short game, maybe one yard, and uh, Hamilton was unsuccessful, and uh, again, I'm kind of surprised that they're running in the middle of the line, but I have a sneaking suspicion that McMeans might be setting something up here with two, yep. two plays up the middle. Right, now this is a... a, a Definite pass situation. He's got almost five yards, a long four, and he's going to fake the run and, and either sprint out carrying the ball or he's going to hit one of his backs coming out of the backfield. 140, clock moving. It means fakes, just like you said, over the middle. He's got a man open and he completes the pass to Briggs, his favorite receiver at the Hampton 30 yard line. So McMeans does exactly what he wanted to. He got the man to get in the open and Briggs was right there and that little fake he does not the line the uh, to the back coming into the line will f freeze the linebacker who would have normally dropped back into the area where that that ball was caught so uh, I just wanted to mention while I was thinking of it that these officials are from this side of the the, uh, the river when the ball when the game is played on the other side we'd have the Peninsula District officials McMean still has the ball, and he's tripped up as he gets about three yards down to the, about the 25-yard line. So let's not forget either that the kicking team for Kempsville has been highly successful as uh, McMeans is frantically telling uh, the coach to get that play into the sideline. That's Nathan Kimball bringing the play in. So the clock is moving. I was, I'm not aware of the fact that Kempsville has no timeouts, but they have they, not stopped. But they have some timeouts left. They called one during that uh, one extra point try, but they still have two, two extra points, but he's going to put the ball up in the air. And McMeans almost has it picked off as one of the crabbers tipped the ball. And the ball goes incomplete, stopping the clock with 30 seconds in the first half. Hampton trailing 13 to 12. Just a real quick recap for you. McMean scored from 10 yards out after the Hampton quarterback, Michael Bullock, coughed the ball up. And he scored on the very first play after that at 7.52. Then Robinson on a long drive by the Hampton Crabbers. It was capped by a seven yard TD run at 148 of the first quarter. Then Hamilton got back a five-yard touchdown for Kempsville, and Robinson again tallied his second touchdown, and we're at 13 to 12. McMeans gets some pressure, throws it up in the corner. The ball is up for grabs, and it's tipped away at the last minute as out on the pattern was Joe Briggs, and defending was Craig Overton along with Michael Bullock. I'll tell you, that was a very close to be, being uh, a good reception. The quarterback McMeans had a tremendous amount of pressure on him at that time and forced him out of the pocket, and he threw that ball on the run and put it right on the money. So now we're going to have to see whether they're going to, they are going to attempt the point or the field goal and uh, 50, 40, so it's going to be spotted at about the 30, 40 some yard line, 40, about 43 yard attempt. Fourth down and five, so Kempsville ran out of downs, and the kick is up, and it's long enough. And it's no good as it ends up wide to the right. So the Crabber fans can let the breath go as it looked like Kemsville was going to score with 17 seconds left, but a deep sigh could be heard all the way over from the <laughs> other side. Yes, yeah. Kemsville was about to go up by four points at halftime, but the, the field goal try of 43, it was long enough. 
Yes, it was. It was he just a little a bit to the right. Uh, part of that sign may have come from this side. I have to be a little bit prejudiced on the other. I can't help that. But <laughs> Not me. I, I, I'm pulling for Kempsville. Oh, uh, yeah. I know you are. Because <laughs> my car is parked in their parking lot. All right. The Crabbers undoubtedly will just simply want to run the clock out for the first half here and regroup as they trail by a, a single point. And just to, to make a liar out of me, they throw a very dangerous pass on the sidelines. <laughs> Mike Smith did the same type of thing last week against Deep yeah. Creek, so he's not going to play would, this game close to the vest. Uh, Mike plays to win. And he, he tried to get over to an open over there and see if he couldn't a, catch him by surprise. It's just a little bit of a screen play over there, but and it's usually not a very uh, dangerous pass, but what the, 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 the wide out is supposed to do is take a couple steps back to catch the ball so that gives him a little bit of cushion, and he didn't do that. Bullock this time hands off. Robinson is tripped up as uh, that very well may be the last play of the first half. Four seconds, three, two, one. So that is it as the Hampton Crabbers, after one last attempt at a pass play, elect to run the clock out. And after one half of play, our score at halftime is the Kempsville Chiefs 13, the Hampton Crabbers 12. We'll be back with second half action after this brief timeout. Tim Cole along with Bob Hintz back at Kellum Field in Virginia Beach. As the second half is just about set to get underway, the Hampton Crabbers will be receiving the second half kickoff, trailing by the score of 13 to 12. And as time permits, I will recap for you the scoring in the first half as Hampton will be on the receiving end of the kickoff. It's a short one taken at the 18-yard line. Breaking outside almost to the 35, well, about the 36-yard line, so the Crabbers will have real good field position to start the second half. This is uh, this is something different with Hampton. Uh, the first time they've got the ball, they started off at their uh, own 20, and then they, they coughed it up. Now, the, the other two touchdowns came when they, they started from their 30. If you remember last week, they started inside their 40 for the most part, so... Uh, uh, Hampton is able to take the ball and drive it down the field. Michael Bullock, the quarterback, hands off to the first man through, breaking across the 40-yard line to the 42. And in the ball game is number 42 for the Crabbers is Summers, Todd Summers, that freshman 5'7", 145-pound running back. He and Robbie Robinson are the backfield tandem. And in the first half, Robinson unofficially with 20 carries for a total of 123 yards. Almost almost exactly what he did against Deep Creek. I think he had almost 150 against about Deep Creek. 151, I believe, is what he had. And uh, the total offense for Hampton went about 160. So you can see where uh, the bulk of the, the run uh, yardage came from. Pick up of six. This is Robinson, left side, as he gets close to the 44. And he'll come up shy of the first down by about a yard. So Robinson carries the ball, as he did 20 times during the first half. And he gets a third down and, well, almost two. Well, I'm anxious to see what kind of uh, adjustments both teams made. And I know both teams went in to make adjustments on defense because their offense was, was pretty successful in running the ball, uh, both Kempsville and Hampton. And, of course, you make your adjustments on defense and see if you can stop their uh, runs. And they... Uh, they may be attacking more at the line of scrimmage now. Third down and a long two, and Bullock is going to pass out on the flats. He's got it for Custis, and Custis across midfield. First down for the Crabbers. You know, that was a very unexpected pass. I'm sure they looked for Robbie uh, right up the middle to pick up that yard or two yards that he had to pick up, and they were not expecting that long pass. And that's a kind of a dangerous pass. You've got to have a quarterback with a good arm to get that ball over there quick before the defensive man can react. And that was a play that was uh, run about with about 17 seconds to go in the first half. That kind of scared us. So the Crabbers have it at the 49 of Kempsville. First down. Fake to the first man through. Robinson, or uh, check that. Bullock wants to throw. He's got the ball downfield for William Jeter. But Jeter couldn't hold on to the ball at about the 30-yard line of Kempsville. Defending on the plate, Joe Briggs, one of those two-way players for Kempsville. As uh, Jeter, my favorite receiver. I don't think it's Bullock's favorite receiver, but he's my <laughs> favorite receiver out there. But Jeter has just shown me good hands all the times that I've seen him play. That time his good hands failed him as he just couldn't quite get the handle. If, if uh, Bullock would have let him, he would have had a touchdown because he was wide open. He had to stop and turn to get the ball. And of course, but again, that doesn't, I'm not making an excuse for him not catching the ball, 
but had the ball been thrown more in front of him, he would have probably scored on that. That was a good setup. Second down and 10. Robinson goes to the hole and is tripped up as he gets maybe a yard as the Kempsville defense stops Robinson one of the few times tonight that he's been stopped for a very small gain. About a yard, Tim. So it brings up a third down and nine for the Crabbers as they will be faced with their second crucial third down situation. They were very successful. And again, anyone who watches football knows what I'm about to say is true. If you can convert your third downs, you're going to win most of your ball games. That's right. Against Deep Creek, they were able to do just that. They only punted, I believe, if memory serves me, one time last week. I think Pinkus may have punted it once for the Crabbers. Well, this is a very long situation because he's got nine yards to go. So I don't know if he's going to run. He's going to pass the ball. He's going to fake it to Robinson. Throw long for Jeter. And this one is over Jeter's head and is incomplete as the Crabbers have gone to the air a second time in this drive and unsuccessful both times as William Jeter was out on the pattern. He appeared to be open momentarily, but he just couldn't quite get to the football. It was well, thrown a little bit behind him, actually. Well, it, and it looked like he kind of stopped to look for the ball, too. And, uh, of course, when you, when you pass a lot, then it's easy... You know, there's a good communication between the receivers and the quarterback where Hampton's not a passing team, they're a running team. Donald Pincus will be the punter for the Hampton Crabbers, and he gets a low kick taken at the 25. And getting away from one would-be tackler and running the ball back quite well for Kempsville was Nathan Kimball, the tailback, 5'8", 175-pound junior for Kempsville. So the Chiefs will have pretty good field position. They'll have the ball at their 34. Well, now, when you come out and uh, you're, you're behind one, one point and you get the ball and it's your turn to take it down and to score and you don't do it, then you immediately have to come out with a real tough defense and get uh, Kempsville to turn the ball back over to you, whether it's on a turnover or where they have to punt the ball. But you can't let them score. Now you're playing catch up again and uh, that could put you in, a, in an eight point situation. They've marked the ball at the Kempsville 31. McMean still has the football, has plenty of time. Now he doesn't as he will be sacked for a loss. McMean's had time momentarily, but the Hampton Crabbers quickly closed over there in the form of number 64, Randy Pearson for the Crabbers amongst others. But Pearson was the man that was able to get a hold of McMean's before McMean's could either throw the ball away or even attempt a, a pass. So the sack will back up Kempsville. So we may very well see some of those adjustments you're talking about yeah. and see whether this comes into a play here in the second half. Well, I watched number 82, Craig Brown, for the Kempsville. He went down and did a little hook pattern. It was wide open, but uh, they put a lot of pressure on him because he's going to have to sprint out. He's not going to be able to go out back and get in the pocket. He's going to have to sprint out to, uh, to get open. McMean's hands off this time, and carrying the ball is Bobby Wilson, number 42, the fullback, 195-pound, six-foot, one-inch senior for Kempsville. So Kempsville gets some success, eight yards on the play, but they had some yardage to pick up on that sack McMean's was, was thrown for, so it brings up a third down and about seven for the Chiefs. And this is a definitely a passing situation, and he is very uh, dangerous in this situation because he can roll out and run the ball, so your, your defensive backs have to uh, really play heads up. Out of the eye, Briggs to the near side, is set in the flanker position, McMeans looks over the middle, incomplete, as the intended receiver was Briggs, and now, well after the play, a flag is thrown, and we may see an interference call against Hampton, we'll wait and see, we'll let them do the call, and from the reaction of the Kempsville team, that's what it's going to be, so a flag thrown considerably after the play had been blown dead, comes I'd flying mean, out from the I'd like to see official. a replay on that, Tim. I'm not second-guessing the official, but the official didn't even attempt to throw the fly flag until the, the Kempsville player turned and looked at him and complained, and then he threw the flag. I just, I'd, I'd like to see that again on, uh, uh, I'd like to see that again on replay, which we'll be able to see when we watch this game again. Well, needless <laughs> to say, nonetheless, it's going to be a penalty against the Crabbers. And it'll be marked off from the line of scrimmage. So it will be enough for a first down as they'll tack on 15. They had a third down and, and about seven. So the interference call goes against the Crabbers. And the Crabbers will now have to stop Kempsville as they'll have the ball at the Kempsville 49, first and 10. I don't want to belabor the point on the, on the officiating, but it is from this side of the river, and you get, to, you get used to uh, the, the tendencies that the officials call, but there's only been one flag thrown against Kempsville tonight. Kempsville from their 49. McMeans a little mix-up in the backfield. McMeans throws it over the middle, and the ball is caught. 
So this time the receiver for Campusville is not the usual Briggs, but in fact Mark Adams, number 81, 6'4", 220, junior. And McMeans successfully completes the pass. It brings up, a again, a, a second down and a short yard. So you have that experimental down. Right here, you really do with this uh, quarterback uh, who can pass as well as McMeans can. This is definitely a waste down. Second and one. McMeans has that ability to maybe play with a down here. He's going to keep it on the quarterback draw. And McMeans is tripped up as he crosses the 40. Down close to the 39. Well, it looks so. like he picked up enough yardage for the first down. What you did, he had to get across the 40. So the, obviously I call it a quarterback draw. It looked like it was a play that he intended to keep the ball from the very beginning. He really didn't intend to pass, it appeared. But he gets the first down as he crosses the 40 to the Hampton 39. So 6.15 remains here in the third quarter. The Crabbers trailing by a single point, 13 to 12. And right now, Kempsville, the Chiefs have the ball and they're moving. First and 10 from the Crabber, call it the 39. McMeans hands off up the middle. This time the handoff goes to number 42, Bobby Wilson, the fullback. And Wilson gets down close to the 35, down across to the 33 yard line. Pick up of about five. Second and five, just to recap quickly for you, Kempsville scored first on a 10-yard touchdown by McMeans after a Hampton fumble. That came at 7.52 of the first quarter, and the extra point try was good, and they led 7 to nothing. We'll get back to that in just a moment. McMeans, second down and five. Fakes the handoff, keeps it around the end. Turns the corner and gets down close to the 20-yard line, and a first down for Kempsville. And he is just a fine athlete, Tim. He can come around and, and fake that handoff and keep the ball and throw the ball, and he punts the ball. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be a highly recruited athlete. Absolutely. Big, big boy, too. Uh, you know, six foot tall, uh, 190 pounds. To continue that recap of the scoring, Mameen scored, and then Robinson scored from seven yards out with 148 to go. The extra point try was no good. Then Hamilton scored from five yards out with 830 to go in the half. The extra point try was no good. And Hampton tallied one more time. Robinson going in from 13 out. And the extra point try, again, no good for the Crabbers. So McMeans this time carries, and he gets about a yard and as he'll a, be about the 19. And that's just a uh, set play. He just takes the ball and, and sprints out. There was no pass or anything intended. It was just a, a straight running play. We have an official's timeout on the field. So the Crabbers, again, if you hadn't seen the first half, the Crabbers had a, a missed extra try point. Then they went for two later on and after Robinson scored the second touchdown and were unsuccessful as Bullock was tripped up in the backfield. So the Crabbers, their 12 points coming on two Robbie Robinson touchdowns. And of course, Robinson had 24 of those during the season so far. So Robinson is the man that makes Hampton go. And right now, Hampton needs to dig in as they are trailing by a point and Kempsville has it at the 19 of Hampton, second down and about eight. The winner of this game to move on to the state semifinals, the game to be played either here if Kempsville wins or at Todd Stadium if Hampton wins next Saturday at 1.30. McMeans completes the pass at the 15-yard line. Again, his receiver, Bobby Wilson, number 42, the fullback, is also the 11th leading receiver in the entire district. So he obviously has been thrown to quite often on that play. He just runs a little uh, swing pattern or a little uh, out pattern out of the backfield. He goes to the line of scrimmage and just goes out. And if a linebacker doesn't pick him up, he's going to be open. And uh, that's what's happening. Because you, you have to really respect the run of McMeans. If you go, if you stay with the, the uh, pass receiver, he's going to run the ball. If you come up to force him to throw, then he will throw the ball. So you really put a lot of uh, decision making on the defensive linebackers. Big third down, third down and almost five. McMeans is being chased and he gets the ball away, throws it in the end zone and it's gonna be intercepted by the Crabbers. So the Crabbers come up with a big defensive play of their own in the form of Michael Alexander, number one for the Crabbers on the deep pattern was defending against Joe Briggs and he came up with the ball, the ball very poorly thrown. As a matter of fact, there was some heat put on McMeans just as he released the ball. So that may have had some effect on his throat. Well, that plus running to the uh to the left and, and turning your body to throw with your right hand, it's a little hard to do it, but he got the ball in the area. 
but uh, that's that's a tough throw for a college or a pro to you to do. So uh, that's a big break for Hampton because Kensville was definitely moving the ball down the field. Well, that's the first turnover, and the, so far the turnover for Hampton was most costly as McMean scored a touchdown after Hampton fumbled. This is Robinson breaks into the open, gets away from some tacklers. He's down close to the 35-yard line, and a flag again. And we'll wait and see before we even guess who this flag is against. It appears it's going to be against Hampton by the reaction of one of the Hampton players. And clipping. That's clipping against Hampton. And this is one thing that, you know, I, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> well, give the benefit of the doubt to the officials. They're obviously a lot closer than we are, but a, a fine run by Robinson will be wiped out by the clipping call against the Crabbers. The only call that's been against Kempsville all night was in the very first series of downs when they were called offside on a uh, on a uh, cadence count, and they have not had a flag thrown against them yet. Hampton has had 15-yard penalties, face mask, uh, clipping, uh, interference. Uh, you know, I I believe that both teams are going to make mistakes out there, but you got to catch both teams, and it doesn't look like the one team's being caught right now. Well, the Crabbers, after a fine pickup by Robinson, that'll be wiped off. And the 15-yard penalty makes it first and 15 from the Hampton 15. So the Crabbers backing themselves into a hole here. They have not been able to move the ball successfully here in the first half, and we only have a little more than three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Bullock hands off up the middle. Little or no yardage for Summers this time as he is wrestled to the ground finally. And the Crabbers trying to mix up the offense. Obviously, if you continue to hand the ball off exclusively to one man in the form of Robinson, in spite of that fact, Robinson is successful. But you can't do it all night long because then sooner or later they're going to start keying up. That's true, and uh, and you know it's very well Hampton is making those uh, those mistakes on on uh, in getting those penalties, and that's very costly because you have a team that can run the ball and and move it on the ground. But when you starting off instead of starting off first and ten, you're starting off first and fifteen or first and twenty. It really puts a lot of pressure on your uh, your offense. Second down, Robinson gets the call, and he is gang tackled as he picks up about three, much to the delight of the Kempsville crowd. Of course, we're on the Kempsville side of the field, and the Kempsville team, well, Robinson uh, is hurt. He's down on the ground, so this would be the most excruciating blow to the Hampton hopes if Robinson is in fact unable to continue. But we'll certainly hold our, our thoughts on that until we see exactly what happens. But Robinson was gang tackled and he is in some pain on, this, on the uh, far side. And the Kempsville team knows the value of Robinson to the Hampton Crabbers. He's been their main cog all year long. So we'll have to wait and see here. The Hampton coaching staff is, there you see it, right next to the referee. Robinson will be helped up, and hopefully he'll be able to continue. He'll have to come out of uh, yeah, the game he, for one play. So. Yeah, he's got to come out of the play, out of the, the game for at least one play, or they'll be charged with a timeout. But uh, you and I know that he's got a backup that is no slouch to running the ball. And I believe this McKnight is the uh, young man that Calvin will Knight. replace in Calvin, uh, Calvin Knight, and he does a good job. Bullock gets the ball away. It's complete over the middle. Oh my, oh my, what a hit put on Overton, and he is feeling it. But he's got him, he's got the first down. That was a tremendous pass and a fine pass by Bullock to hit that young man across. I thought he was gonna cut inside that guy and he, the tackle and he didn't, and that was a tremendous hit. It was a clean, clean hit. Good, clean, open field tackle. Overton undoubtedly had the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully that's all. But the Crabbers, very importantly, keep possession of the football. They've got a first down at their 42. And I see Robinson coming back into the game. So I just heard another big sigh of relief from the far <laughs> sidelines as Robinson has returned. Now, how much he'll be hampered by whatever happened to him a while ago, that, of course, remains to be seen. Sometimes when we're sitting up here, we can't tell whether or not Robinson might have pulled a muscle and, and might be very ineffective. Right. Well, uh, Robinson got up and, uh, and ran off the, the field. And I'm sure I he believe, had the wind knocked I believe out that's of him. what you called it. He probably had the wind knocked out of him, and I believe that's what happened. Got, Hampton is going to put the ball up in there maybe and open up that, that run a little bit better. I don't he know. He really got popped. Overton did. But Bullock, a very, very important play, was able to get the first down. Fake to Robinson. Bullock again wants to pass, completes the pass. And this is, again, close to a first down across midfield. So the Crabbers have gone to the air all of a sudden with great success. 
First down for the Crabbers as they crossed midfield down to the Kempsville 48 yard line. Minute and 44 remaining here in the third quarter. A tight ball game, 13 to 12. Kempsville leading by a single point, but the Crabbers started this ball from their 20, were backed up after a fine game by Robinson, was negated by a clipping call, so they had a first and 15 from their 15, and now have marched all the way out to the 48. This is Robinson across the 45, down close to the 44. So again, Robinson back in the ball game. The main attack for Hampton is Robinson, but Bullock has shown the ability to do other things with the ball. He really has. He has impressed me with those two throws that and uh, that the, the one that he threw to Overton across the middle was a, a very, very important play because had that not been completed, then they would have had to punt the ball uh, and then come back and hit another one pick up. But uh, Robbie seems to be uh, not hampered at this point. Pitch back goes to Robinson. Robinson will be stopped for no gain as the Kempsville defense read that play all the way. On the near sideline, uh, Drew Bergren had gone downfield for the Crabbers. He was fairly open, but the play really wasn't set up for a pass. It was kind of a, a fake rollout, and Robinson was stopped after a very short game. And that was more like a, a, an option play where you pitch the ball to Robbie, where Robbie usually takes the ball and, and uh, finds a hole and goes, you know, goes straight up and instead of on a, 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 an option run. I think he's much more successful when he's got the ball on the direct handoff. Fake to Robinson. Bullock has time, throws it downfield. He's got a man open, but it's Overton, and Overton can't get the ball as it's just simply thrown too high. And Bullock took a pretty good hit after he released that ball. So Bullock stayed tough in the pocket as he threw it downfield. Just 14 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And now the Crabbers, with a fourth down and six, will have to kick the ball away. If uh, this was Bethel's plan, Instead of uh, Hampton, at this point, I would say watch it out for the fake kick because Coach Kozlowski loves to, to line up and kick formation and run or pass or do something out of it. So I don't know if Mike Smith does that sort of thing or not. I, it, he hasn't had to all year long because he's been so successful. Uh, where Bethel was, was kind of struggling this year, but Kaz does that even when he uh, has a, su a successful team. But I, I look for him to punt the ball. No scoring so far here in the second half as Kellum, or rather Kempsville had a much better opportunity to score but was unable to do so when Hampton intercepted in the end zone. The punt is fumbled and the ball looks like it's going to be recovered by Hampton. Oh, wow. Now that's the a break. Crabbers get a break. Woo. Now that could turn it around right there because this is about where Hampton turned the ball over to Kempsville in the first quarter in the, and, and they scored off of it. And this Robbie Robinson recovered the football. <laughs> Hey, does he have a nose for the football or what? The man knows how to find the football. So the Crabbers, almost an identical situation, will have the ball at the 12-yard line of Kempsville. So the time has elapsed here in the third quarter, but it, without any scoring, it was still a very exciting third quarter. It really Hampton. was. Uh, Tim, uh, uh, excuse me for interrupting you, but both coaches have made some adjustments out here, but this is a definite break for Hampton to get the ball first and 10 into 12 after you had to punt from your 45. Well, as I mentioned, the, the big difference in the game, the, the turnover that Hampton gave the ball up to Kempsville very early in the first quarter. They gave it up at the 10, and McMeans just simply carried it in for the touchdown on the very first play after the fumble recovery. So now we've seen here at the end of the third quarter an equally important turnover with all things being equal. Hampton trailing by a single point will have the ball in perfect field position at the 11-yard line, and it'll be up to the Kempsville defense now to prove whether or not they should go on to the semifinals of the state. The winner of this game advances to the semifinals to be played either here if Kempsville wins or at Todd Field on Saturday at 1.30. So the crowd on the side, on the Kempsville side, yelling defense. There you see the Hampton team on your screen. On the sidelines, Robinson spins away down inside the five. He's down close to the goal line. He's going to be stopped shy, however, as he'll be here about the three. It's, it's amazing to watch uh, Robbie Robertson run the ball because he was hit about two or three different times, but he gets hit and he turns and spins and bumps and, and just keeps right on going. And he's just, uh, he picked up about nine yards on that play. So uh, he can pick up a first down prior to getting a touchdown. He is hurting, I might add. I'm watching him and he is in some pain. He's holding his ribs and we may see an official time. Well, the official, the, the referee was looking right at him and he gets the call. I don't know if it was a fake or not, but he appeared to be hurting. 
He gets the call. He does not get in for the touchdown. And I don't know whether that was a decoy or what, but Robinson, I was watching him in the huddle, and he looked to the sideline as if he were in some pain, and he, and he was holding his ribs. There you see him slowly getting up with the help of Michael Bullock. Robinson's going to come out of the game. I don't think that's a fake. He is in in some pain. They're going to have to, uh, I believe they're going to, well, have to call timeout. I thought it was. A, it looked like an official's timeout, but uh, I thought they might uh, check and see if he got a first down. It looks like he's about a half a yard short. Of the first third round. down, third down and about a yard. It's third down and about three yards for the touchdown. So Calvin Knight checks in. And Hampton will be close to a first down. I won't even hazard a guess at this point. Well, it looked like he got through the line of scrimmage. And if he got through the line of scrimmage and he can fall forward, he should pick up the first down. And they're going to have to measure at this time. And I believe that's what they're doing. Yeah, they, they're calling timeout to measure, Tim. The marking of the ball, most important in this situation. Hampton can, as you said, get a first down without actually scoring. And we'll wait and see. They stretch the chains out. The Hampton team gets a first down. So now they've got four downs inside the five. And it'll be first and goal. And it looks like they got the ball spotted at about the one yard line. So Robinson checked out and he has not returned. In the backfield is Calvin Knight, number 12, and number 42, Todd Summers for the Crabbers. So Robinson will not be on the field for a possible touchdown here by the Crabbers. And on a busted play, Bullock has to eat the ball at the five. It appeared he wanted to hand off to the first man through who was Todd Summers, and Summers, a freshman, apparently, and I, I wouldn't even hazard to guess, apparently blew the call. Well, I don't know what happened, but you notice that when Bullock come around there, he slipped, and we're talking about the same place where the uh, field goal, the uh, McNeef, uh, Leneve, slipped on the extra point on Hampton's first uh, extra point try. So that moves the ball back to about the six or, six or seven yard line, so they got a second, but they got much further to go. Second down and goal. The ball actually is marked at the five. The three yard loss. And this is Calvin Knight. Check that, Bullock has it. He's racing for the corner. He will not get in, however, as he'll be very close, but he'll be about a yard and a half shy of the, of the touchdown. So Bullock faked and did so well as it appeared he had handed off, but he kept the ball and got down close to the one. Now, you go back to the importance of a possible field goal here. What would you do? It's, it, uh, it, we're premature in this, obviously, but I'm just talking about the possibility. You got third down and goal at the one. Well, you got you, you got to go for the points. You cannot come around, away from here empty. Robinson comes in, and Robinson is playing with pain right now. He is not. That 100%. may be a fake. That may be a fake. Uh, not a fake, but uh, a draw. You look for him to get the ball, and you don't give it to him. Well, let's see what happens. See if Bullock keeps it. Well, he hands off. Touchdown. Okay. Now, that was a fake because they never even thought about giving the ball to Robbie. But when he comes into the ball game, I know Kimsville had to think that he's the one that's going to give the ball. They give the ball to the up, up man, and he scored. And that's a big, big uh, uh, play for Hampton because they had to come away with some points. With only 8.55 left in the game, Samuel Creighton went right up the middle. He never was even close to being stopped. And again, Robinson was in the ball game, so his presence had to make the defense consider the fact that he was in there. But Robinson uh, is, is definitely playing with some pain right now. He's, he's bending over a lot, and he's holding what appears to be he's holding his right side yeah, in the rib area. So he might well have, have a, a uh, bruised rib. Uh, you know, Mike Smith has called timeout, and he's in there talking. He's got to go for two here. He's, he knows if he goes for one, he's still only going to be six points up. So if he if he gets the two-point conversion, then he's 20, he's seven points, and then you put the, the monkey on Kimsville back. Should they score, then for them to win, they have to go for the two. If they go for the, the one point, it's tied, and then if it ends in a tie, then we have the, the playoff uh, uh, that they have where each team will get the ball on the 10-yard line. We'll get into that if that happens that way. That's a very... Let's hope we don't have yeah. to get into that because you, you need a, a New York <laughs> lawyer to try and figure that one out. But they got to go for two here. And then, of course, then that, it goes to your defense. If you can get your defense to play tough and, and get the ball back and turn the ball over, and then uh, that's what Hampton's got to do. Well, but, I was uh, looking over on the Hampton sidelines. I'll get to that in a moment. Mike Smith was having a, a very lengthy discussion with the Hampton defense. So they've been well rested. The Hampton offense has had the ball, and we got flags everywhere. Someone left early, and it goes as an incomplete. But we may or may not see. If the flags are early, it may have been before 
because uh, they're going to rule that the, the play was, was going. They didn't stop play. Normally they will stop goes. play and, and go from there, but in this case they didn't do that. But uh, that really that really puts the defense uh, the, the defensive team on the on the on the spot. They've got to stop because here what we, we get, we're talking five point difference. So a touchdown is your six. They got the lead and he kicks extra point. The pressure's on Hampton. Hampton's the Hampton get the team ball is back. is pleading their case to the officials that the play should have been stopped before it was actually run because of the fact that the penalty should have been called and assessed before the play actually got going. Now Hampton has to be careful because they do not need to get a penalty for uh, what was that they got against Bethel? Uh, 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 illegal illegal uh, conference. conference or something. But in this case, had the official blew the whistle, threw the flag and blew the whistle, then Hampton would get to try again. Well, that might be what they're contending. And of course, if they didn't blow the whistle, then of course Hampton Hampton has to live with it. But, right. it. but if the whistle had blown, they should have had the opportunity to attempt it at least one more time. And of course, then you have a a whole different ball game in that sense of the word. But Hampton, for the first time in this ball game, is leading as they have trailed from the very beginning. The closest they got was 7 6 and 13 12. So they're having a discussion. Mike Smith is over there discussing it with the referee, and he will not win this argument. No, he's not going to win the argument. You can see he's walked away, but that's exactly the call he's looking for. That if the, if the, you got illegal motion, you blow the whistle and you assess the penalty. No, 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 you don't either. But how? Well, obviously the call was that the play continued and the whistle had not blown. So the I'm sure that's what Mike was, was calling that about. Was was, that was Mike's point, exactly. Call, yeah. That was his contention, and of course that was not the case because the officials did not stop the play. That would have been to Hampton's obvious advantage if they had stopped the play. So the Crabbers now have to kick the ball off. They lead by just five points. Had there been contact, we're, we're told from some of the... Uh, the people here in the press box are trying to let us know how to call the game. Uh, that if contact had been made, of course, then, the, then the, the play would have been stopped. But as the case, nonetheless, the play stands as it was, and the Crabbers lead by five, and they'll be kicking off. Laniv will undoubtedly hope he doesn't lose his footing this time. No, and he, I look points. for a short, short kick again. No, he's going to go long. He's going to try and go long with it. So back at the 15-yard line, it's fielded there. And this is Hamilton as he gets out across the 30 to about the 31. About the 32-yard line, they'll mark it. And Kempsville will have eight and a half minutes, uh, actually a little more than eight and a half minutes to move the ball. And we have another injured Hampton player on the field. One of the Crabbers is down and in some pain. Now you can see on your screen, I can't make out the number. I was trying to pick up the number, and I can't pick the number up either. So the Hampton defense has the the burden of this game basically been put on them now. And, and as I started to say, and I, in fact, I did mention something to the fact that the Hampton defense has been on the sidelines considerably since the midway of the third period. The the Crabbers had the ball, moved down to the 49, had to punt the ball. On the uh, on the punt, the ball was mishandled. The Crabbers, in the form of Robbie Robinson, once again recovered the fumble and then have had the ball again for five or six minutes here. So. The Crabber defense has been rested. Now, whether this is going to be a, a factor or not, I don't know. Craig Overton has had a tough night tonight. Well, he the has boy had one. Caught a uh, ball a while ago and then caught a shoulder in the midsection to help him pay for it. And he lifts off the field, but he is off and he's jogging on the sidelines. So apparently he's okay. So McMeans brings out the Chiefs, and the, it's all on, on their back right now. This is Hamilton. Hamilton gets across the 35 to about the 37, pick up of almost five. Time is a factor now as we are moving towards the eight minute mark in the fourth quarter. And Hampton defense has got to really hang tough here. If they're gonna stop the uh, Kempsville team, if they can stop them, get the ball back and then grind it out and maybe uh, get a touchdown or a field goal, then it's uh, it's really gonna, gonna help their cause. But they're gonna have to stop a fine offensive team out there. Field goal will not do Kempsville any good. They must score a, a touchdown or two field goals. And carrying the ball for Kempsville is Nathan Kimball, number one. And he gets up across the 45 to about the 47. So Kempsville moving the football. And, and they had moved it here in the second half. And they're moving it on the ground, which they have done uh, quite easily tonight. Uh, moving the ball against uh, Hampton's uh, touted number one defense uh, in, the, in the district. Uh, 
they are moving the ball well and, and Meek and uh, good uh, good openings and good holes on the uh, point of contact at the line of scrimmage. First down from the 47, Kempsville with the ball. It means hands off. And again, across midfield to the Hampton 47 is Kimball once again. So Kimball is not listed as their primary ball carrier. The first uh, ball carrier for Kempsville is McMeans as a rule. And then of course, it goes right down the line from there. Hamilton is the second leading ball carrier on the team, but Kimball comes in here and is carrying the ball well for the Chiefs. Picks up seven, second down and three. The Hampton defense digging in against a larger offensive line than they've faced all year. McMeans trips and will not get back to the line of scrimmage. So the Hampton defense gets a break there as over to prepare to make the stop was Tim Penny, number 81, and also for the Crabbers was number 70, Sherwood Jones. But they didn't really need to stop him as McMeans tried to make the turn and the field as good a condition as it's in, it's still a little bit soft. So yeah, I'm sure is. sometimes when you plant that foot, you're going to have some difficulty, as we've seen already on numerous occasions. Well, I'm anxious to see. In this situation, he's uh, third and about three, and uh, I'm anxious to see if he's going to run the ball where they have had success or if he's going to uh, do a play-action pass or a sprint out. Third and three. Have to get to the 43, and they're not going to get the first down, as they'll get to the 45, but they'll be short of the first down by about a yard. So now you have it. Six minutes, I check that, 5.55 remaining in the ball game, and it's fourth down for Kempsville. So is this what you call a key play? Yes, and I, and I look for them to go for, the, go for it. Uh, where they are right now, and at the... At the uh, point of the game they've got to go for it to pick up the first down they can't afford to give Hampton the ball and let them run out the clock on them no question about it as they are obviously going for it so this is it fourth down and one at the Hampton 45 Kempsville has to get a first down McMeans hands off no first down the Hampton Crabber defense comes up strong they in fact they threw him for a loss of about a yard on the play so Kimball, who had success against the Crabbers, finds none this time as he has stopped for a loss. The Crabber defense has held. And that was a fine defensive play by the Hampton team because that young man had run the ball very successful on this drive so far, and uh, he came up very short. And of course now this Hampton has got to get some first downs and uh, run this clock out. And should they do that, uh, that really puts uh, Kentsville in a bad situation because if they do get the ball back, then you're talking pass, pass, pass because you can't uh, run the ball and you don't have the time. We're inside of five minutes. The clock is moving. Handoff goes to Calvin Knight. Calvin Knight will not get much. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage at the best. So Ronnie, Robbie Robinson is apparently injured as he is not in the ball game right now. They are going to miss him sorely. But I'm telling you, I have been impressed with Calvin Knight all year. Now, what he can do against a big team like Hemsville remains to be seen, but he has the speed. Yes, he does, and he's a, an able backup for uh, Robbie Robinson. He has all year come in, and, and uh, they have not missed him. Of course, they have not played a, can, a team of the, the uh, defensive uh, caliber that they're playing out there tonight in Kempsville. No gain, second down and 10. Bullock over the middle, has Jeter wide open. At the 35, the 30, the 25, he made it all the way. He's in there for a score. What a tremendous play, and that's the young man that you have been talking about all year that you were so impressed with is this young Jeter. But he put a nice move on that defensive back like he was going to take and cut the ball to the inside and didn't cut to the inside and just outran the defensive back, and that was tremendous uh, play. And i like to know the yardage on that, Tim. I didn't get catch well, where they, they were running they from. had that at the 47 of Hampton. So it would be a 53-yard touchdown pass from Bullock to Jeter. Bullock to Jeter for the touchdown. On to try the extra point, Leneve. And this time he does not slip and it's good. And that, that really puts the uh, uh, a tremendous a lot of pressure. You got 25 to 13. Uh, you've got to score twice. And so you know Kansas is gonna come out and they're gonna be throwing the ball. They've got to, they've got to score quick and then get the ball back. They could score quick uh, try an onside kick, get the ball back, and then score again. This is what they're going to have to do. And uh, 
Ronnie Robinson is on the field, but he is uh, down near the five yard line at the end of the field that the Hampton Crabbers just scored, and he is down and hurt. So I, I, Robinson came back in the game for the extra point try, I think, and he's going to be helped off the field. So should Hampton be able to hold on and move to the semifinals, of course, his condition will be very important as to oh, the success absolutely. that Hampton may have in furthering their chances for the, the championship. Well, this will be a, a, a tremendous blow to Hampton, but I know that we will not see Robbie back in this game, but Kinsville has got to score two touchdowns to get back in this ball game. They can't score a touchdown and the two-point conversion and a field goal will not do it. They, they've, got to, they've got to score two touchdowns, and that's going to be tough with the time remaining in, in the game. Now let's give the, um, the credit here, uh, at least that I, I'm going to, to the Hampton defense. The, the defense has technically only allowed one touchdown to Kempsville tonight. The other one was the fumble recovery that McMean scored from 10 yards out. They were at an obvious disadvantage, but they didn't drive down the field and score against Hampton, but on one occasion. One occasion, that's So true. the defense held on a crucial fourth down situation. A while ago, we're going to see a short kick taken at the 41-yard line and taken down at the 45. For Kempsville, carrying the ball was number 11, Curtis Brown, one of the up men. And Kempsville will have good field position from their 35. So McMeans, who has been highly successful all season, one of the best offensive players in the state, he ranks third in the entire 3A statistics on total offense. And he has less than four minutes to get two touchdowns. So they've got to cut out for him. Kempsville, if they win this game, they'll earn it. Well, and Hampton's got to watch out, too. They can't play too lax on defense and let them have some uh, uh, quick score here. They've got to uh, make him earn it. McMeans steps up and is sacked as he is taken down at the 32. The Hampton defense is getting tough out there. Number 70 over on the stop is Sherwood Jones for the Crabbers. I'm very surprised that he is not uh, doing a sprint out. He was very successful in the first half of uh, sprinting out and passing the ball. He seemed to be able to pass it real well from the run, but he is dropping back into the pocket, and that's when Hampton can get to him and, uh, and throw him for a loss. So uh, he's, uh, he's digging a little hole for himself. He's got second and about 12. Three minutes and five seconds, clock moving. McMeans again has to scramble, gets away. Now he'll have to run with the ball, and he has stopped as he gets back to the original line of scrimmage which is the 37-yard line. He got back the yardage that he had lost on the sack, but that was not what he wanted to do, and it brings up a third and 10 for the Chiefs. And the clock is running, which is one thing that he is he's fighting now, and when I say he, I'm not only talking with Means, but I'm also talking to Kinsfield team. They are not only fighting the Hampton defense, but they're also fighting the, uh, uh, the, the clock. Two and a half minutes remaining. Kempsville trailing by the score of 25 to 13. It's been all Hampton in the second half as far as the scoring is concerned. Creighton from one yard out and Jeter from 47. Check at 53. And on the reverse, we're going to have a left-handed halfback option is knocked away by Michael Bullock at the last instant. And that was a, a fine, fine defensive, defensive play. play. Yes, it was. And I think we, saw the, <laughs> we said Amen. that in, in unison, Tim. But that really was. That was a, a nice call. That was a uh, reverse with a left-handed pass. And that number 82 has got to be about a foot taller than uh, uh, the, the, the Hampton defender. You're not far off. He's six <laughs> feet five. Craig Brown was the intended receiver, and, and over there on the play was none other than Michael Bullock. So the Craver defense, a fine play, because had he caught it, he was in the, in the end zone. There was no one between him and the end zone. Uh, Bullock went for the ball and uh, was fortunately for Hampton able to deflect the ball. So we've got fourth down and 10. And as the time has run out for Kempsville here as far as their downs are concerned. 2.13 remaining. McMeans has to get a first down to keep Kempsville hopes alive. Passes it, completes the ball. And a fine play if in fact they really was in bounds. I believe they have. They ruled him in bounds. At the 45. So it not only gets Kempsville a first down, but it stops the clock with 2.06 remaining. So Keith Custis over there was unable to stop the pass completion. Joe Briggs, number 15, had gone downfield, and McMeans showed his caliber of play as he completed the pass. And desperation, left, fourth down play, they had to have it. And that was a good, it was a good, good offensive play. But uh, the Custis did a good job in letting, you know, not uh, getting an offensive, uh, I mean, a pass interference call, but also not letting him get behind him either. McMeans rolling, looks downfield, throws it long, and it's intercepted by Michael Bullock. 
And Michael Bullock is the quarterback, of course, for the Hampton Crabbers. And uh, that young man is, is, has played a tremendous ball game tonight, not only in handing the ball off and faking in the backfield, but passing the ball well, and then playing a tremendous job on as a safety for the Hampton team. So that, Michael Bullock intercepts the pass from McMeans. And with less than two minutes to go, the clock is restarted and the Hampton Crabbers have the ball at their 25 yard line. Now, Robbie Robinson undoubtedly will not be back in tonight's game. Look like uh, it should be Calvin Knight should be back in for him, uh, replacing him. And what they're going to do is they're going to keep the ball on the ground. They're going to, you know, if they got a punt, they'll punt the ball. But they're going to do what they can to run this clock out. So the Crabbers in the form of Michael Bullock. Now, as he caught the interception a moment ago, will be running the football, and a late flag is thrown into the pile. There may have been some extra hitting as the frustration level now for Kempsville will undoubtedly come through. Kempsville played a fine football oh, game. They, they did that. They, they moved that ball down the field uh, at started the second half and had uh, a very possible of making a score, and there was a fine defensive play, but I believe who was uh, intercepted that ball in the end zone? Was that uh, Bullock that... Uh, I believe it was Alexander. I Alexander. think it was Michael Alexander, number one, but, uh, who made the interception for the Crabbers, who stopped. That was a crucial play. Right, it sure was, because Kempsville was on the move. They had a lot of momentum going. They could have scored and widened their lead, because at that point, they were leading. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, that stopped them right there. Uh, That's why, in, in spite of Robinson's obvious credentials, I have to give credit for this victory. If I can light my cigar this at this time, Coach. <laughs> Go out ahead, Brad. <laughs> this one this one belongs to the Hampton defense. Oh, the absolutely. defense came up and played the way they had to play against a tough Kempsville football team. Well, so and, no you, and you look out there, Tim, and you're going to find a lot of the defensive players are also playing on that offensive unit. So they have been going both ways tonight. This is Calvin Knight, and Calvin Knight will not have the success against Kempsville that he's enjoyed against some of the teams on the peninsula uh, in his in his yeah, of course, Calvin Knight has tended to come in when the, the Hampton team has pretty much put a game away, uh, so the, some of the pressure's taken off of him. But uh, here, Kempsville, of course, is still fighting right down to the last second as we're inside of 40 seconds, 37 seconds. And the clock is moving. That's good. That uh, goes. Uh, you have to give credit to the coaching staff. They have just done a tremendous job with this Kempsville team. And Coach Cahagan, uh, you know, take his hat off to the young. The, the, the guy has been around a long, long time and has just done a fantastic job, and his team's shown a lot of character out there. They're not giving up, even though it's, it's you can light your cigar. The game is over for everything except for the uh, the clock running out. But uh, you you hit the nail on the head when you said that the, if there's a game ball given away tonight, it ought to be given to the Hampton defense. They've just done a, just an, uh, an outstanding job. Hampton is called for delay of the game. 23 seconds remain in the ball game. Hampton pretty much has it all but uh, wrapped up, as you said. And we're going to try and, and have for you the presentation of the trophy, which will be presented at the center of the field, we're told, to the Eastern Regional Champions, the Hampton Crabbers, at the conclusion of the game. Unless Kellum, or Kempsville rather, stops the clock, that will be the last play of the game. And I have a feeling that it's going to accept that fact as we have 10 seconds and the clock is moving. So Kempsville's season will go to their first defeat as they'll be 10-1-1 overall. And the Hampton Crabbers are the Eastern Regional Champions and they will host the state semifinals at Todd Field next Saturday at 1.30 against Mohican or someone like that. <laughs> I'm going to let you pronounce it, but that's this game that uh, the people over in, in the Peninsula District should uh, make sure they get out to Todd, uh, Todd Field and see this because it is going to be a tremendous Tremendous game. Hampton is a, is a tremendous representative of the, the uh, eastern uh, region, and uh, you can see some uh, real fine sportsmanship out there as the, both teams are meeting out in the center of the field and are shaking hands. And I know that the Kimsville team is, is uh, disappointed because they didn't win, but I want to tell you one thing that they, they have nothing to uh, uh, feel sorry for. And you see uh, uh, Hampton and a. Uh, we can get our camera to, to pan over to about the 22 yard line to our right there. Uh, you can see a couple of Hampton play well, it's too late now, but uh, Joe Briggs, who had a successful season by any standards and a great game tonight uh, as he time and again caught those passes from McMeans, was being hugged by one of the Hampton players as you see some real sportsmanship being uh, 
generated here on the field. I know it's a tough pill to swallow when Kempsville had every hope of, of going on to the Eastern Regional Championship and eventually the state semifinals. But the, that is not going to be the case uh, as Kempsville's team is slowly leaving the field. Ronnie Robinson now, again, a very important thing here as uh, I think I've got it right. It's Monacan. Monacan, okay, and I'll buy that. That's Probably pronounced many... it several different ways. <laughs> Well, that's from the central region, and that's uh, so they don't have very far to, to, to go. But now, uh, what I don't know uh, who whose district they're in and who they had to play or what their record is. But uh, I know Mike Smith uh, Monday will uh, probably sometime Sunday will have some films of that team and we'll start uh, uh, looking at their tendencies and what they do. But I tell you what, he sure better take his hand off of that defensive team. They just were outstanding tonight. Uh, I can't say enough for them. And uh, I just, uh, as, as a point of reference here, I do want to say I hope that nothing is real serious with uh, Robbie because Robbie had a, uh, you know, he definitely was hurting. You could see he was hurting. I could see he was hurting. And uh, he didn't play the last uh, five or six minutes of the ball game at all. But as you can see, the final score is uh, Hampton 25, Kinsfield is, is 12. And uh, that, that makes Vanessa District feel real, real good. Well, the Hampton Crabbers will be getting the trophy. I'm not sure we'll be able to stay on for the actual presentation. We'll try to. But just to recap quickly for you, at halftime, it was 13-12 to 12 in favor of Kempsville. There you see uh, Robbie Robinson right there on the sidelines, number 11. So uh, he is, is uh, up and alive, at least. He doesn't appear to be in great pain, but he obviously left the field a couple of times yeah. holding his right side, and he appears to be doing just that as we, as we see him. Uh, at any rate, it was it boiled down to we talked about it being a chess game. At halftime, it was a chess game. It was 13 to 12. Both teams had tried a couple of different things as far as extra point tries were concerned, as far as their attack was concerned. And it, it, you said it yourself. You said it depended on who made the adjustments correctly in the second half. And apparently, the Hampton defense made the adjustments. And if let's go back to the beginning of the game and 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 talk about the average points that that were scored. How many points did Hampton averaged all year? About 26 points they a game. 25 they averaged 25.5, 26 points. And that's what they scored tonight. So they're right on their average, and they their defense allowed one more touchdown than what they have all year, but it was an, uh, enough that uh, that was it. And this coach, uh, Mike Smith, and uh, they've got him out there in the center of the field right now talking to uh, uh, the, young, the man that I believe is uh, the one that hands out the trophies. So the Crabbers milling around as this overflow sellout crowd tonight here at Kellum Field in Virginia Beach has seen a real hard fought football game. And as you said, it's a cliche, but I can't help it. Both teams played extremely well. The Hampton defense had to be the difference, and that's what they ended up doing. They were the, deep, they, they were the difference. They sure were. We have our camera right out in the middle of the field, and you can see the uh, some of the Hampton players. They're, they're hamming it up. <laughs> ABC Wild Sports. Yeah, that's Calvin Knight, number 12. And we'll pick up some of the others. We're number one, and, and right now they are. They're number one in the state. They're ranked in the, uh, by USA Today, as 22 in the nation. And they are the Eastern District champions. And they'll go on to additional play they've got the as they've got the trophy. they've got the trophy. So we're going to go on now, and uh, hopefully, uh, we hadn't mentioned anything about it because we're not sure we're going to be able to, but we're going to try and cover the game on Saturday at Todd Field at 1.30. Regardless, we hope to see a lot of you out there. I'm going to be there. I'm sure you will, Bob. I will be there, no doubt and, about uh, it. That game, 1.30 Todd Stadium, Hampton Crabbers move to the semifinals for the 3A championship. So for Bob Hens and the entire crew, thanks for watching. This is Tim Cole. The final score again, Hampton 25, Kempsville 13. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good evening.